Hello everyone, my name is Radhikwa and um, this video is um, going to be titled The Dangers of Remaining Hurt. I've been trying to do this video for about a year now but it felt like it wasn't time Like, and I didn't want it to be on my timing, I wanted it to be on God's timing so I waited, I prayed and I asked God, I was like, normally I would do my YouTube videos and I would try to get them out weekly but then so much has happened in between that time and I felt like I was like, Lord, I don't want it to just be me pre um, teaching my feelings. I want it to be about you. I want it to be about a word that you want for people to, to get. It's that right now word. And lo and behold, he did just that. He answered me and gave me a vision of everything he wanted me to put out. To um, So I pray that this would bring healing and deliverance to many. And it would be, be do the, doing the same for me, actually. So let me pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for all the things you have done that you will do. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the timing, Lord God. Everything that you do is perfect. May you anoint my lips to speak what you want me to speak and not my feelings, Lord God. And I pray many will be delivered and healed from this word. And I pray many will share it so many, so even thousands of others can be healed and delivered from the hurt. And we'll go from being hurt to healed in Jesus' mighty name. So, like I said, the name of this video is the, the dangers is the dangers of remaining hurt. Um, if you see me looking to the side, it's because I have my notes here. I tend to write. I love taking my notes, and it's because I it's so easy to talk and keep on talking, and then you just lose with you with the main you know the main thing you were supposed to be saying. So you will see me looking to the side so I can stay focused on what I came here to to speak about. So the dangers of remaining hurt. We all hear the saying, as we all know, that hurt people hurt people. Everybody heard that before. And we always say, yeah, hurt people hurt people. We even agree upon it. Like we all, you know, decide like, yeah, that is true. However, no one has ever took the time to, um, or take the, took the time out to say, but why do hurt people decide to hurt people? Why? You know, so I, when I decided to dig deeper on that and God let me know, like dig deeper and understand why do hurt people hurt people? So we know all of us, everybody on this earth has, or will have, will have to go through hurt. And in some way, um, one way or another, we're going to have to, but one thing we need to know is that there's one thing to get to become hurt because that's something that may happen. However, one thing we need to learn how to do is how do we respond to that hurt and to the person that hurt us. So let's, I'm going to bring examples for people that the people, some, I will bring examples to different people or people that went through hurt and the way they respond to that hurt. Okay. So like perfect example for people that, that hurt, I'm going to bring up different situations. So one, let's talk about relationships. I'm going to bring up a marriage. Uh, um, uh, a wife or it could, be a, it could be a husband. I'm going to say a wife, a wife finds out her husband committed adultery. And the first thing that's going to hit her, she's going to be hurt and she has every right to be hurt. Right? So she's hurt. She's, she's just like, okay. So right then and there, if she automatically decides on her own, I'm not only hurt, I'm angry. Even then she still has the right to be angry. But after that, this is when the danger zone comes in, where she immediately goes from, from being hurt, dangerous, um, hurt. She goes from hurt, then she goes from angry. Because it even says in the Bible, be angry and don't sin. However, from after that, she does, she chooses not to forgive. And after she chooses not to forgive, we know once you don't forgive, oh my gosh, it brings on more sin and more sin and it keeps on adding up. So after she chooses not to forgive, not only does she choose not to forgive, she chooses to become bitter. She becomes bitter. It's an automatic thing after not forgiving. And then after becoming bitter, she said, like, I'm going to get him back. And then it might not, she might not even leave the marriage. She, but guess what she going to wind up trying to do? Be cheat on him too. Let's go deep. I'm going to go deep because I want to break down. I don't want to stay in this, but I wanna, I want to, I'm going to go in different scenarios. Another scenario is people that have best friends or friends that they know for years. And then suddenly that person backstabs them. And I'm talking about a friend that's, that you know, it could be even a family member that, that you love and they either hurt you 
and you're just so shocked like this person backstabbed you to the point and first thing you have you have every right to be mad and be hurt but when you get further when you want to not forgive them and again they they choose to not forgive and then it goes to bitterness and it goes to wanting to um cause revenge it goes even i'm gonna bring it even further a parent there are parents that has abused and sorry to say even people that have been molested they've been hurt and decided to abandon their child and those that do not choose to forgive that parent from what they did to them in their past and it's not see people think that when you we speak when we speak about forgiveness that we're automatically saying that Oh, it's going to be easy. Forgiveness is not easy because the, the deeper the hurt, the harder it is to forgive. And But this is why we need God. We need God. We, without God, we could do nothing. And I'm going to break this down further. So we know anyone who has been hurt by someone in their past when they refuse to forgive, as it says in Matthew 6, 14 through 15. And I'm going to read that to you. For if ye... For if ye forgive men, this is King James, the King James Version. For if ye forgive men their, tras their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So this is going to show you how dangerous it is to choose not to forgive. We have to forgive. And not only, first of all, we're walking in obedience with God. That's number one. And it's so important. But it's God is saying that if you don't forgive others, I'm not going to forgive you when you try to repent of your sins. And that's dangerous because then we're trying to pay back. We're trying to do what Jesus did on the cross. And we cannot pay for our own sins. It is too expensive. And that's why Jesus had to die. We have to understand when God tells us to do something, how important it is for us to do it right and do it right the first time. Cause I'm telling you, we will reap what we sow. Okay. So let me keep on going. And this is why I stay with my notes. Cause I'm telling you, I was just getting a rabbit hole. We can be so well, we can be upset at the person who hurt us, but we should not walk in sin because in Ephesians 4, 26, 6. And let me, let me get to this. I have my phone here so I can get to it kind of quick. Because I, I be sometimes I be so slow. <laughs> I won't lie. Four, four, so it's Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. And I, I tend to like, I could do New King James Version. So it says... Ephesians 4, 26 through 27 says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So what that means is that we're going to be hurt. It's going to happen. People are going to hurt us. We're going to get offended. However, it says you can be angry even. But when you get to that point of angry and you don't make a choice of letting God in and you want to do it your own way. Then this is says, be angry, but do not sin because it causes sin. Anger could get to sin really quick if you do not give that anger to God. And it said, do not let the sun go down on your wrath because that anger, if you do not give it to God, the devil will create a stronghold or he'll be like, but that person did this. Whispering in your ear the whole time. That person did this. Oh, you got to get them back. And then you wake up in the morning. I'm not I'm choosing not to forgive them. Guess who was in your ear the whole time because you chose not to pray. It says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath or nor give place to the devil. So that means when you are not taking your anger to, to, to God first, because it says, seek ye the kingdom first and his righteousness, which is his right way of doing things, then you're automatically giving place to the devil to whisper in your ear to do the next sin to create you to sin. This is, it gets so deep. <coughs> so we have to choose to forgive or we become that person who hurt us. That is so deep. Sin begets more sin. So if you choose to sin rather than forgive, you open up the door that goes from unforgiveness to bitterness to resentment to all out seeking revenge. Like I, like I said earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. You begin to seek to do what was done to you. So the enemy, when you give the devil... Or open doors, not saying that you don't want to give it to God. You want to do it the, um, your way, which is basically the devil's way. You're saying that 
I don't need God. I'm going to do it my way. And the devil's then now you're going to be on autopilot with what the devil wants you to do. Because if we're not listening to God, we're all, we're by default listening to the enemy. And I need y'all to hear that. Okay. Because the devil is always whispering things in our ear, but we can cast those imaginations down if we have God. But if we're not casting those imagination down in the name of Jesus, then we're listening to them. Because a lot of people think that when the devil is whispering in our ear, that that's our, that's our, um, conscience that's just us thinking that, that 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 we ourselves are thinking that no the devil is whispering things in your ear like do this i need you to go there you see that look remember that person y'all we need god i need you guys to hear this we need god so i'm gonna break down a, a, a scenario not as you know, it is a scenario but it's more of a something i heard and this was what made me want to do this because it hit me so deep I had an old friend that her, her spouse committed adultery on her. It broke her so bad and it hurt me to see her like that. And she, so, so because her ex had committed adultery on her and like I said, she didn't give it to God. She got from the point of hurt. Then she was angry, every right, but not too long after that. She began to resent him. She began to say, I got to get even because he did, He he kept on doing more evil stuff to her. So it was like, oh, he's doing this on purpose. So so over the years, she's, she now felt that how they says her people, her people, she began to seek out married men and felt like, because, and that, like, say if the women would find out and I'll ask her, like, you're not worried about the woman feeling out? Like, why are you doing this knowing that this was done to you? And she literally said, that's not my, that's not my fault that the woman find out. If had she been doing what she was supposed to do, he wouldn't have been doing this. And I was so shocked because I was like, so you are going to become the very person that hurt you. Because now you are the adulterer. So in this, like I said, and like I said, I could never play innocent because I've done some stuff to people that done me wrong because I didn't give it to God. I let the sun go down on my anger to the point of one. And, and, and I, I, re, I, I created revenge. I, I was like, I'm going to get this person back. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I can talk about that and say it for myself that I've done that. But let me tell you, what people don't understand is when you try to seek revenge, that it only comes back on you because you have to reap what you sow. So how you respond to a person that hurts you is very important because you people think, oh, when you get them, when you get that person back, that that's good enough. No. So now what you did to that person has to come back to you. Everything that you do, every seed that you put in the ground is going to sprout back up and you got to deal with it. It's, 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 this is deep. So this is when it becomes dangerous. When you decide to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to heal in my own way. My own way of healing is paying that person back. I'm going to tell you guys, it's not the smartest thing. It's not the best thing. It's not the way to go at all. So we're going to go deeper. There are people that didn't let go of jealousy. Listen to this. There are people that did not let go of jealousy and envy from others whether from family or friends, that they were they were never delivered from past hurts. So much so they took it on, they took on the rejection spirit. So <clears throat> excuse me. I want to talk about this because this is so deep. So excuse me. <clears throat> this is really deep. So there are people that from their past they they uh somebody hurt them and then they begin to look on other people's stuff and begin to envy and have that jealousy from something that they didn't get at a young age and because they never let go that 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 jealousy and it could have been a toy i'm talking about way back when because these people did not let go of this this jealousy and envy from a person it could be a sister it could be a brother it could be a friend or something that somebody else had that you couldn't get so every time you looked at that person it was like I don't like that person and that resentment and that just sat in for over these years and you never asked God and never surrendered that jealousy and that hurt to God. The devil created a stronghold. 
So that jealousy and envy is now in the place of the enemy where he tries to, he makes it so much so that that jealousy and envy, that that's all you, you live by that. Oh, oh Lord, help me preach this. Help me teach this. Lord. Help me teach. Help me, help me, help me, Lord. So in that rejection spirit, Lord, this, please help me say this. It's that rejection spirit. It makes, it gives this, it gives some people that, the, that entitlement, like you owe me, they cannot be rejected at all. So it's to the point where you, um, they can make you mad and they don't want you to stay mad at them. So they'll do, they'll cause manipulation. They'll manipulate you to, or buy you stuff just to make you, um, feel better with them. They can't, you can't stay mad at them. So they are manipulators to the T. They will get where they'll do whatever they have to, to make things th go their way because they couldn't get their way back then. So they will do whatever it takes, manipulating, lying, cheating, stealing. Let me tell you. So people would, they, so there are some people that began stealing because they felt that they couldn't get it. Um, they were so jealous from others. They're like, I'm going to get what I want. That rejection spirit will have them with this entitlement. Everything belongs to me. And I will, I will, I will lie. I will cheat. I will steal. I will do whatever I have to do just to get what I, what I want. This is no joke, y'all. This is why it's a danger if you do not heal correctly, which is with God. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and this is also something where most people know it as that narcissist behavior, that narcissist behavior where they feel like, where they feel everything that they do is like I said, out of manipulation and they, they just want everything to go their way. Even if they feel like you're wrong, they're wrong. They could be wrong in something, but they'll make it seem like it's your fault. They'll make it seem like you're the, you're the reason they have that victim mentality. Like they, no matter, they, like I said, they'll do something wrong to you, but then they'll put you, they'll make you feel like you're the problem and they're the victim, no matter what it is, even if they're wrong, that narcissist behavior, guess where it starts from unforgiveness, bitterness, all this stuff. This is the stronghold that I'm talking about. The devil will keep you in this to the point that it will kill you. It will eat you up like a cancer. This is why unforgiveness is so horrible. This is why we are to forgive immediately. <clears throat> so another thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to hurt, because then I will get to the other part of how we can um, heal. Because now you know the answer to that is the dangers of this is unforgiveness. So the dangers of remaining hurt, it leads it leads down a it leads down this bottomless pit i can if i can, if i may say where it sin begets sin the sin does not stop to the point because the wages of sin is death and that's what the enemy wants for you so he creates a stronghold where you which it's to the point that you could barely repent he wants you to have a reprobate mind where the devil could just take you out so you got to understand it's so important for us to be healed but only god can heal us Another thing I'm going to mention is another part of a hurt. That's the hardest hurt that we ever have to deal with, which is death. Death is one of the hardest things for me. Death is one of the hardest things I think anybody, especially when it's sudden, and even if people are sick, it just hurts bad. So that's a hurt that we could, we're going to have to deal with to the day we die. So when I bring up, the reason why I'm bringing this up is not to take away anybody pain from being hurt. But one thing I do want to say is that we have to acknowledge and know that God can heal. And some people will have to take more time than others. However, let's get to the word. In Matthew 5, 4, it says, blessed are they that mourn for they will be comforted. People, there are some people when a person dies, that hurt hits so bad. My God, I get it. I try not to get emotional. I get it. There's some people that died in my life that it's, it, I, it, I took it bad, you know? I didn't allow myself to heal. God, Jesus said, blessed are they that mourn for they will be comforted. He said, you are blessed. Why does he say that you are blessed? Because he is letting us know that he's going to comfort us. He's the one that's going to heal us. So when we take it amongst ourselves after a death 
of anybody that we lose that is close to us. If we take it amongst ourselves to try to heal ourselves, we're going to spiral down out of control. Because some of us that lose someone from a death, we say, I'm fine. People will ask, are you okay? I'm fine. They immediately go back to work to try to get their mind off of it. So they be become, after a while, they become workaholics. There are some people that um, will seek relationships, sexual relationships, thinking that that love is going to suppress how they felt or how they're feeling. Some will go to drugs or alcohol to suppress how they are feeling instead of admitting I am hurt. Lord, I need you to take this pain. Lord, you said, blessed are they that mourn for we will be comforted. I need you to heal me. We need, when, when, when we lose someone, we need to admit that we are hurting. Number one, admit it. Number two, we got to get before God, the throne room of God. And we have to say, Lord, I need you to heal me. I am hurting. And we need to take out the time. I don't care if it takes a year or years. You sit before God and get before the throne room of God. And you pray and you ask God to heal you and make sure that, there's, that he heals your heart. So your heart won't become hardened. We need to heal. We need to take the time to heal and admit that you're hurting. Admit that this is hard because God said, blessed are they that mourn because he will comfort you. This is not no earthly comfort. This is a comfort from the almighty God. That means that he's going to bring a healing that this earth no person could do. So when he tells you that you are blessed for accepting his comfort, that's something that's like an order. Go, go to him. It's something that he can only do. <clears throat> when that person decides to go from alcohol to sex to all these drugs and all this stuff because after a person died, it's because they try to heal themselves instead of allowing God to heal them. And it's dangerous because some some people have drank themselves to death uh, or some people, they are now and they become serial daters where they just cannot stay out of relationships. They, they'll they break up with somebody and a week later they with someone else because they are, uh, they, they think that th that relationship is, is going to be the healer. They think that that drug or that alcohol is going to heal them. That is that instead of them, so they taking it as that that being the thing that's going to heal them, and it's, it won't heal you. It will bring more damage to you. <clears throat> that's what the devil don't want them to know. So why do why do hurt people hurt people? The answer is because they didn't allow God to heal them correctly. The problem is that we allow pride to kick in after we get hurt and see the worldly way to heal, which is always out of anger and revenge. When in the end, we only hurt ourselves because we have to reap what we sow. Everything we do in this body, if whatever seeds that we sow, they're going to come back up and we have to deal with them. So we have to be careful with our actions. OK, and how we react, because how we react is still an action and we still going to have to deal with it because we weep what we sow. It says it in his word. God is not mocked. Over time, we begin to bleed on those who truly love us and want the best for us. It is not fair for those people that, that you know, so say if you get hurt and after you get hurt because you didn't want to heal correctly, you look at everybody, even the person that's willing to love you and be there for you, you look at them as if they're the person that hurt you. So you can't even get in right relationships because you see them as the person that hurt you. You can't have friendships because you feel like they're going to turn their back on you. You see, and even loved ones, some people push people away where they can't remain close to them. They got to, they have to put on this facade of this fakeness because they put themselves so deep into that manipulation, that, that person that, um, that's hurt. They, they so hurt. They cannot even get close to people. They bleed it on others from that hurt that they never let go of. <clears throat> it is the word of God says in first Peter five, seven, let's go to it. Guys, I really hope that you are taking this in because it's so deep. So it says in first Peter Five, um, first Peter chapter five, verse seven, 
Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. So we should we should take <clears throat> when he said take um cast all your cares upon the Lord, he's telling you all your hurts, all your heartaches, your pains, all the things that weigh you down. Come before my throne. God is saying, Come before my throne. I care for you. I love you. I will be there for you. But there's so many people that allow the devil to speak louder than God. And they are hearing, go get that person back. You didn't deserve that. I'm not saying that you did deserve it. But God is telling you, I can heal you in such a way. God, God will heal you in such a way with the scars. There won't be no scars. And you can help heal other people. When we decide that we can do it ourselves, we make a mess of it and suffer and make those close to us suffer as well. Because those that those that are trying to love those that have been hurt, they don't know how to accept love. Because all they will know is, I'm hurt. And they get, they get this victim mentality where it's, I'm hurt, so you're going to just be there for me. That victim mentality, you're going to be there for me because I'm hurt. And instead of them just embracing it and say, okay, let's heal from that hurt though. So we, you can accept the love that I'm trying to give you. But they can't unless they surrender it to God first. This is so deep because it's such a stronghold that people are suffering from. From their past. And I'm talking about stuff from that happened when they were little kids. God wants us to be healed. It is time. <clears throat> Another thing. I wanted to mention is that another thing we have to begin to do, there are some of us, like I said, I was the a type of person that I hurt, I hurt people, you know, before I became born again, I purposely used to just hurt people, especially if they hurt me. We need to know for those of you that hurt people and now you became born again, but you never forgave yourself for what you did to other people to the point that you don't want to get close to people because you like, you don't know who I was. God made you new. You became a new creation. You have to accept that being a new creation. We have to learn to forgive ourselves. Because when we don't forgive ourselves for the things that we did to other people, we begin to push people away. And these people love us. They didn't just want to embrace. They want to embrace you. And you're pushing them away. But like, because it's like, yo, you don't know who I used to be. But let go. Let it go. God is doing a new thing. He wants you healed, delivered, and set free. But you have to say, Lord, go before his throne. The person I was, I know I'm no longer, but help me forgive my help me forgive and let go of the memory of the things I did for to other people so I can accept the love that they want to give me. There's there's a, a um a scripture that I love in Psalm. It's from in Psalm 138, 8. I love the scripture because, and I hope you guys write this one down because it, 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 when I read this, I was like, I love this one. This is one of my favorite scriptures. So the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. I love that. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not thy works of thy own hands. Listen to that again for those of you that are hurt, been hurt, and want to heal. The Lord will perfect that which concerns you. That's your hurt. That's your pain. That's your anger towards somebody that hurt you. He knows how many hairs and strands of hair that you have on your head. It's counted. You think about this like, wow, that's a lot. Yes, he knows. He created us so he knows how to heal us. And I think we need to know that. He created us. So he knows how to make anything that is wrong in your body or anything you're going through right. Don't seek ourselves. We are flawed beings. We're flawed. We're going to make it. We're going to make a mess of it. But without God, we could do nothing. So we need God to heal and be delivered from the very thing that hurts us. We need to get on our knees and seek him. <clears throat> So when we allow God to heal us and literally take the time out in prayer and fasting, because fasting is very, especially, I'm going to pause on what I was going to continue to read is because 
There's certain things cannot come out unless through fasting and prayer. So if you got deeper into anger and to the point of resentment and to the point of avenging someone, you may need to get to, to fasting where you got to fast that old thing out so you can get delivered from whatever the enemy or try to put on you. So you can let go of that unforgiveness, that bitterness. You may you fast and pray. Yes, get before God. Put a, push that plate away and get before God so God can heal and deliver you. So another thing is we have to ask God to take out. This is another scripture I love. I love, I love, I love, I love. In Ezekiel 36, 26, we have to ask God to take out our stony hearts and give us a heart of flesh. Put, uh, put your spirit in me, Lord God, and just make my, make me, give me a new heart, a heart of flesh. Let me tell you something. That prayer is a prayer that I prayed over loved ones that have their hearts hardened towards God because they allowed the enemy to step in their lives and create a stronghold. For those that have been walking in unforgiveness, those of you that have been having unforgiveness or uh, they've been jealous of somebody else and looking down on somebody else and you know your heart has been getting hardened to that person where you look at them and you can't stand them, that's not of God. And it's so dangerous because I don't think people understand we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven with unforgiveness. We cannot enter the kingdom of heaven with jealousy and envy and, and avenge and just wanting to avenge it. Because even God said that vengeance is mine, say of the Lord. So when you ch choose to create, you know, to do revenge to the person that hurt you, God is going to deal with you. And like I said, it's not easy. But one thing I learned that is easy is getting before his throne. We are so blessed. There are people that are in hell right now screaming to have one more chance with God. One more chance to pray that prayer that they know they could have prayed to God, to get right with God, but they ignored him. We are blessed. Every moment that you get up, you are so blessed to be in his presence and to be able for him to hear you. People in hell are not being heard. They had their chance and they rejected him. Now is the time to not only hear him and speak to him, but not only repent, but say, Lord, I need you. It's part of that relationship where you just say, this person hurt me and I need you. I need you to heal me. I need you to take out my stony heart and give me a heart of flesh. Put your spirit in me. Make me new, Lord. Renew my mind from the cares of this life. Ren renew my mind for the way I want to act that in my flesh. Let God knows that we are flawed. God knows that we are living in this flesh and it's so easy to want to act in your flesh. But he asks us to be ye holy as I am holy in all of your conduct. That's a lot. We can't do it by ourselves. We can do nothing without God. Remember that I said that, please. And you can look it up in scripture. We can do nothing without God. So we try to do it on our own. The mistakes, the heartaches, and the extra pains that we got to go through. Because we try to do it on our own. There's so many people that's in hell right now. Because they feel that I can do I, I, I'm going to live my life how I want to live it. Okay, but what, at what cost? The cost of your soul? <clears throat> we need to ask God to fix our hearts. This is a heart issue. When we go before God and we acknowledge that God, we need God and we need God to heal us and deliver us. That's putting our hearts towards God. When we reject God and try to do it our own way, our hearts are hardened. The more we go away from God, our hearts are hardened. And we get, it gets so hardened to the point that if we do not allow God to, to make it a heart of flesh, it will kill us. We will die in the very sin that we thought was so easy, just a, just a revenge or just a, a, because of that hurt. This stuff is serious. This is dangerous. Will you allow that person that hurt you to you become that person to the point it could lead you to death and to hell? No sin is worth it. No sin is worth going to hell. No unforgiveness, no hurt is worth you going to hell. It's time that we forgive the one that hurt us. When you do this, you're putting that hurt in God's hands and we heal and you make your enemy. God will make your enemies your footstool, as it says in Psalms 110 verse 1. Because when we give it to God, God knows how to handle it. 
He's God. He created us. He's a God of heaven and earth. He knows how to deal with every situation that we go through. The problem and the question is, do you believe him? Do you have faith that he can do what we know what we can't do? Do you believe that? Because according to how you respond to the person that hurt you, do you choose to be remain hurt or do you choose to be healed because God can heal you? According to what you believe is what you're going to act on. Because if you don't believe that God is really going to heal you, you're going to go and try to do it on. You're going to try to heal yourself. And if you do believe it, you'll get upon your knees. Now that you know, now you, now that you're watching this, now you know how to deal with hurt. Yes, you got to take out time to heal. Even after a person that hurt you cheated on you, take time to heal. Don't jump in another relationship. It's not going to help you. The next person is not your God. The next person is not going to heal you. It's not going to make you feel better. Bouncing from one relationship to another relationship to another relationship is not going to make you feel better from the last two or three or four people that hurt you. You need God. You need to be healed. There's something that was in your past that causes you to get from relationship to relationship to relationship. Because you never healed, you feel that every relationship is going to heal you. You have that in your mind. I believe this person is going to heal me. I'm going to get to the next person. So you don't want to be, you don't want to sit with that hurt. So you keep on going to another relationship. Now's the time if you hear this, go to God, go before God and say, I'm, I'm tired of living in the same cycle. I'm tired of living in the psych, same cycle where I'm going from relationship to relationship. I'm going from drug to drug to drug. I'm going from alcohol to alcohol to alcohol every time I get hurt. You, that's, the, that's your same cycle on how to deal with it. Why don't you, why don't you go before God and that allow him to heal you? <clears throat> so our job is to pray for our enemies, as it says in Matthew 5, um, 5 44. And love them when we have to be around them. Let me read Romans 12. Romans 12, 22. I really hope that you guys are getting this because this is helping me. This is not just me just trying to t preach to teach to y'all. Like, it's not it. Because I'm not a teacher. I mean, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I am not a, a what they call it, a counselor. I'm not all of that stuff. So we have to know, as it says in Matthew 12, 20, it says, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he is thirsty, give him drink. For in, in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And even 21, I'll go further. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's, God is telling us there's a right way to go about people like people that um that hate us. There's a way to go about loving your enemies because in in in, in Matthew five forty four it tells you to love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you, that do you wrong. Pray for these people because when you begin to pray for these people, you actually begin to love them. You know why? Because you're going about it the right way. Instead of your heart being hardened for, for trying to do it your own way and the devil became creating a stronghold, when you pray to God, he softens your heart to the point that he will, he will show you and he'll give you a dip different perspective where you'll see a person in a different way. And we'll know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in higher places that we know these people are having, they have demons that they open the door to because they wanted to not forgive. And all this, that's why I said you might have to fast these demons out. Because we are opening the door to demons when we just choose not to forgive. Because like I said, it becomes resentment and um, a, a revenge. Sometimes this revenge can lead to death. Some people will kill people because they were like, I'm going to get this person back. And the devil will have these people kill people. This stuff is so dangerous. The dangers of remaining hurt. So... When you, the reason why it, it, it gets, I'm going to read this again because I want you to understand it. So it says, if your enemy is hungry, we should feed them. We got to love our enemies. If they're thirsty, give them a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on their head. It confuses the enemy when you decide to love on them, even despite how they, they, chew, they, they treat you. You still love them. You still be there for them. They're sick, help them. They're hungry, feed them. They're thirsty, give them a drink. Because it confused, oh, the enemy gets so mad. Like, because the enemy wants you to be upset. He wants you to create, um, do revenge. But when you try to, when you decide to do it God's way, oh, the enemy causes confusion to the enemy. But it can also turn a, a person's heart and say, 
if you got God, whoever you serve, I want to serve because you're doing it right. Something is something is something is different, and I want that. I want that peace that surpasses all understanding. That's not that's not the peace that the world gives. That's what God would do. He would give you peace in the midst of your sorrow. He'll give you peace in the midst of how your heart is feeling with all that hurt and pain. This is God's way of doing it. We need to heal from the hurt of others have caused us. So when we can stop saying hurt, we, we, we got to get to a point of stop saying hurt people, hurt people, where we can begin become a people that says healed people, heal people, because that's what I want to hear. I'm tired of hearing hurt people, hurt people. Okay. But now that I became born again and I chose to give and surrender my life to Christ, there's something new that God has for me. And I want to receive that healing. So I don't want to keep telling you saying hurt people, hurt people, because the things that we say out of our mouth will come to pass. We got to stop saying things and then wondering why these things keep on coming to pass. There's, there's death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we got to be careful what we keep on. We keep on announcing like the world is doing. We got to be, we got to be um, spiritually minded and understand, wait, I don't want to continue to be hurt. I choose to be healed. So heal people, heal people. So I'm choosing to walk into the healing that God has for me. And I'm going to heal others from the help. I, I'm going to, once I become healed, I'm going to get, continue to heal people. That's the way, that's the way the disciples were doing it. They got healed and delivered from certain things. So when they got, was able to get up on their two feet, they began to heal other people. That's what we, as disciples, that's what we are to do while we are on this earth. We are not supposed to be sitting silent. That's not what God called us to do. This, there's a work that we are supposed to do for the kingdom of God. Oh God, God is so good. Let, these words that are coming out of my mouth is awful. This is not me, y'all. So the dangers of remaining, remaining hurt become the, you become the person that hurts you, losing who you are because you only identify yourself as being hurt. So people that hurt people, hurt people is because they only know hurt. So they become that victim mentality of I'm hurt. So I'm hurt. You're going to treat me as I'm hurt. I'm, I'm the queen of hurt. And you're going to just respect me for that. God has called us higher. We cannot remain what the enemy wants to call us. He has called us. We were fearfully and wonderfully made. So when we are keeping names that the enemy is calling us, we no longer know who we are. We have to know who we are. We have to know who we serve. Who are you? Is the question you have to know. And don't go by what you went through because that's not what God goes by. Once he heals you and delivers you and you surrender to him, you are his. We could cry out, Abba, Father. We are adopted in. You guys have to understand what Jesus did on that cross. It's time to let the creator of heaven and earth heal us. We can do nothing without him. It's time that we heal. We can step away and get along with God and heal from the past so we can prepare for the future that God has for us. As it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he has plans for us. But sometimes when we are so stuck on our past, we can't look to our future because the devil loves for us to be able to continue to look back so we don't see what God has in store for us and had a, has um, ahead for us. Our past holds us back when we refuse to let go. The devil loves to remain in the past. God tells us in Philippians 3.13, and I'm going to read it to y'all because I love this verse. I need y'all to hear this. So Philippians chapter three, verse 13, if you guys are um, with me, brethren, I counted not myself to have apprehended, but the one thing I do forgetting those things, which are behind past, come on and reaching forth unto those things that are before ahead, press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. My God, my God, thank you, Jesus, for your word. His word brings healing. It will rebuke us sometimes because we need it. It would just prune us. Listen, y'all, we need God's word. Stay in God's word because there's a life. It's life. The word of God is alive. We need to be before his throne. We need to pray before God because God being in his presence brings healing as well as reading his word. We need him every second of every day. We need to talk to God and we need to read his word. It is the very answers that we have. We be asking, people will call us psychic for the answers that only God can give. I'm going to end this with this. 
And I, I really pray that you guys would share this if it really touched you. I would never say your hurts were not serious, but I am saying we serve a God that, that can do all things. And one of them is healing you from all your hurts. Some may need more time than others, as I, I said earlier. But one thing we need to do is have the goal to begin the process. And we have to be willing to break the cycle of remaining hurt. Get before God. Tell him the truth. Say, I've been sitting in hurt for so long that I became hurt. And when I say became hurt, I mean your name is hurt. Your heart is hurt. Your mind is hurt. Your identity is now hurt. That's all you know because that's all the devil wants you to know because you didn't do it God's way. We need to heal correctly from past hurts, no matter who hurts you or how they hurt you. Some have to get before God longer than others, but go before God. He cares for you. Lay your burdens down and say, Lord, I'm suffering from this and this is bothering me. This person hurt me. This thing hurt me. I was jealous of this person. I was envious of this person. I need your help. He is willing and able to do exceedingly above above all that we can ask or think. Think about what that think about that. God is able to do all things. The only question I ask is do you believe? Your doubt is a making you stay and remain in hurt when God says without without faith you can you cannot please God. We need that faith in God because He's the one that can heal, deliver us, and set us free. Those he who He set free is free indeed. You can be free from the, your past hurts. Do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe that he can set you free from the pain that the person caused? Yes, you might have to sit it out longer. I will never take away, again, I will say it again, for people that lost someone, I will never take away the pain that you may have to feel for a lifetime. But what I am saying is that God said, blessed are they that mourn. That means he can heal you like no one else can. And when you are healed or any of you that become healed, begin to heal others. Lord, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I pray that it reach reaches millions. And I pray right now that, Lord God, you will bring healing right now to anyone that's been hurt. And I pray that you would just, Lord God, convict those that are trying hard not to say that they want the healing from you. I pray that you'll convict them and they'll just shift their way to you and say, Lord, I need you. And I, I'm sorry. And ask for forgiveness. And Lord, please heal my heart. Because this is a heart issue, Lord God. Heal their heart. Renew their minds, Lord God. And bring healing and deliverance to them from the past hurts of others. And let them walk into the newness of the healing. In Jesus' name. If this has changed your mind of remaining hurt. And how, how you think about hurt people, hurt people. Let's become the people that are healed. And will bring healing to others. You guys be blessed. I love you guys. Please share this. Don't even ask me. Share it, please. That's what God wants. That's why he told me to do this video. Because so it's everyone's, I want everyone to be healed. Okay, so you guys be blessed. I love you guys. Bye.